Are we voting on the next game? Yeah, we can vote. I don't know if the vote thing works, but we can... <laughs> It'll be entertaining to watch it not work. Why don't, we, why don't we give that a shot? Okay, here we go. Woo well, actually, you know what? Instead of voting, we can vote. We can vote if there's a big argument. But uh, I'll tell you what I got. You tell me what you want to see. And if there's a fight, then maybe we'll put it to a vote. I've got Madara, which is a big old crazy Madara 1.5, which is a, I don't even know what it is. It's a cooperative dungeon crawler, I think. I think it is. We'll see when we get in the box. I've got expansions to Feudum. I've got Revive. I've got the reprint of Fields of Arla, which is an Uwe Rosenberg game. I have, uh, I believe it's called Mythwind, and I have Inventions, and and I, I, th I think I think that all the stuff that you saw in the lobby picture, that's what I got. Who's Who wants Straw Poll? Yeah. Oh my god, but I gotta give numbers to it though, and then I gotta go get my numbers out. That's why I don't think the straw poll will work, because I have to... All right, hold on. Let me, let me get my numbers. You guys are... This is demanding. Hold on, just a second. Ah, okay. Uh, do do boo boo Do-do-do. do 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 Hopefully you didn't just get a big old butt shot that whole time. Okay. This is gonna be hard to keep track of, because I can't put them all on the table at the same time. Let's get some numbers going. Okay. There's one, there's two, there's three. People who are just joining us for the first time would be like, what on earth is he doing? And these are blank. <laughs> oh no, if they're blank, this might not work. <laughs> this might not work if we don't have the numbers. It's been a little while since we did a straw poll. That's why this is not going. No, nah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, abort. <laughs> I'm embarrassed now. Uh, where did my numbers all go? All right, what do you guys, what do you guys want to see? Uh, how are you for time? Nah, I'm good. I can I can do I I can go all night, baby. I gotta get to bed some point, but uh, yeah, kill that straw poll. People who aren't joining for the first time say the same thing. They sure do. <laughs> what on earth is he doing? Uh, somebody name a game, and I will I will not not any game the game that I just mentioned, and I will crack that open for your pleasure, your edification. Nobody cares. Then I'm picking. No, from the knees. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's a heavy board game. Uh, you still straw pulling? Oh, he's oh he's learning. Wow, nice. I noticed how you didn't put them all in though. <laughs> so hit the exclamation mark vote and then the number you want. Very good. Did it work? You closed it. Why'd you close it? It looked like it was working. Do revive or aerial for share share. Do aerial. What's Ariel? I don't have Ariel. What's that? Oh, Arla. <laughs> <Can't read. laughs> my, my, my vision is degraded since the last time I streamed. I can't read chat as well. All right, Arla. Uh, it didn't work? Darn. Arla? Oran says Arla? That, that's how we, that's the best way to lose Omelet, is if we, uh, if we open Arla. But I have a feeling I know what Arla is going to be. It's going to be Chits to the eyeballs, am I wrong? It's just gonna be like chits and chits. Okay, Fields of Arla. Let me tell you a couple things about this. It's just, you guys had to pick the one that's on the bottom of the stack. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm gonna move this game, and then I gotta move this game. Well, it's a bit better. Oh. This game, Fields of Arla. Oh, should I leave the price on? You guys wanna see what I paid for it? I paid $99.99, which is pretty beefy. I think one of the first games I ever cracked 100 bucks on was Caverna by the same designer, Uwe Rosenberg, who's a German guy. We did a whole Uwe Rosenberg fest a couple years ago. Uh, two years running, we did like a, like a, a spotlight on him monthly. We have a... Um, Supporter on Patreon, DM explains, who absolutely adores Uwe Rosenberg. We actually had him on the live stream, and he ran down his top ten Uwe Rosenberg games. And Fields of Arla, excuse me, Fields of Arla was number one, and I thought that was mean because you couldn't get Fields of Arla. This was sold out everywhere. There's like one or two copies banging around in the states, and. I uh, I tried, try as I might. I couldn't couldn't get a uh, couldn't get a pristine copy of it. So the nice thing is that they just recently uh, re-released it, and it's available. And so when I saw it on the shelf, I was just like, Whoa! you know, it was like seeing a unicorn or something. So uh, very excitedly, I grabbed it. So now I get to see what all the fuss is about. Here are a couple of things that are interesting and weird about Fields of Arla. 
<laughs> Wait, one large game board, one supply board, two home boards, two storage boards, 8,000 chits. Yeah. <laughs> This is 60 wooden animals and over 80 other wooden tokens. God help us. Okay. Are you interested to see if like this is different than the version you know maybe? I don't know if they've made changes to it, but they tend to do that with board games over time. <laughs> Barely heard anything. Hmm. Box fartometer. I said box fartometer. It's a one. All right. So here's another one where you know what you're getting into with a Nuva Rosenberg game because there's going to be things of plenty and no place to put them. Like this half of this box, I can tell is all cardboard punch boards, stuff to punch out. And look, what do you get? Nothing but baggies. Just this is like this is what Feast for Odin was like. So many of his games. Agricola is another one of his games. Oh my gosh. Silica gel, do not eat. And the other thing is that you're gonna recognize pieces. Yo dog, I heard you like board games, so we put boards for your boards in this board game. No kidding, it's like that. It do be like that. Uh, it's fantastic, says Oberon. You need to play it soon. I'm very excited. You know what, I almost played it with, uh, of all people, my eldest Cass, Cassandra, was very interested in it because she just wanted to play a farming game. I said, well, you know what, I've got one. What's unique about it is that it's only one player or two players. You may not play three. If it's three, the third person kills over and dies. I don't know what happens, but uh, but I was gonna say with uh, Uwe Rosenberg games, since they're um, made mostly by the same publisher, uh, which is Lookout Games. I don't know if this one was Look. No, this is Feuerland. Um, when Lookout Games does them, you mostly get the same pieces. But these look like are the okay. I don't know. What the hell is that? <laughs> what is that? I'm gonna guess it's either a dog, a sheep, or a pony. I'm thinking dog. Is that like a Shetland or a, like a, I don't know what the, no, Shetland's a pony. Shepherd, is that what I'm trying to say? I don't know, but like that's a lot of dogs versus not that many sheep. Do you need that many dogs for that many sheep? Probably not. I don't know what's happening. Are they cows? There's cows in the front. Wait, 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 context clues. Look, oh, are, do, do those look like cows though? I don't know if they do. All right. Uh, T and Trade gives you a third player option. Thank you for that. Yeah, T and Trade. So that's the next uh, chaser, man. Like this was hard enough to get. Uh, I guess they're probably just seeing if this one sells to decide whether or not to reprint T and Trade. But for a while, T or you know, for a while, T and Trade has been really hard to get. Well, I was even going to buy T and Trade when I couldn't get this one, and then wait for this to be reprinted so that I had T and Trade when this came out. I'm almost sad that I didn't do that because I do not have the expansion now. Uh, interestingly, these can't be player colors if it's only two players. So I don't know what they are. If you've played the game, tell me all about it. You know more about this than I do. And then some cubes, not that exciting. And then some, I think, other cows. There's white cows and black cows. Is that what I'm... No, these look like cows. I still don't know what these are. Please clue me in. What are these things? And you get to sticker the cows. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. All right. Ages 14 and up. Uh, many times people confuse that. They think, oh, you know, 13, you can't play the game. Mostly that's down to like testing. Like they're not allowed to say that it's, they have to say it's for 14 and up because they haven't paid to make sure that the pieces won't choke a baby. But I think in this case, it might actually be an age recommendation because Uwe Rosenberg's games are not always for the faint of heart. They're usually quite, uh, quite heavy and complex. There's a couple of uh, exceptions. Patchwork's one of them. Uh, there's an overview. I've seen this, uh, pictures of this setup. It's a big sprawling farm that you're managing. And now bring on the cardboard. So the this is illustrated by not who I think it is. You know who I'm thinking of. This is not a Clemens Franz game, is it? Is it? Let me know. Let me know in chat. Uh, remember the token trackers for Glass Road or Aura? You get a pile of trackers here. These are the trackers then for Glass Road and Aura? That's interesting because in other Uwe Rosenberg games, what you get, especially in Agricola, is you get like a thousand vegetable wooden meeples and you get a thousand, uh, what are they? They're vegetables and wheat and, and wood and all kinds of things. And I guess maybe to save a buck or to save a tree, they've done something different with later Uwe Rosenberg games, which I think is a good idea, which is where you get, let me see if I can find a board that does it. You get a board to track your stuff on. Is this going to be it? Yeah, maybe. I see different resources kind of ghosted here. Anyway, you move trackers up and down to keep track of the number of things that you have instead of actually having a physical number of those wooden pieces. Fits in the box better. Uh, certainly, I don't mind it. I think it's a kind of an elegant system. I like it. Uh, but this is just... 
this is just whew. There's lots of look at this old big old vertical board of stuff. Now, if we were to complain about Uwe Rosenberg games, if you've never played one and you think, are they for me? Uh, a couple of things you, you should know about them. One of them is that Agricola's nickname is Misery Farm, and that's because it's about subsistence farming. It's about just growing enough food for you to last through the winter and not die. Not the kind of like abundance farming that we're used to in games like Stardew Valley, where you're like, you're making surplus and you're selling it, and then you're going into the dungeon and fighting monsters. Real farming is not like that. Sorry to break it to you. You don't fight any cave slimes in real farming. Um, so you have to, uh, th this is one of the, I don't know if it's the first one to do it, but it's definitely the one that everybody knows who plays board games. Uh, that you have to feed your people. So there's a harvest phase and during that you have a certain number of family members and if you don't have enough food for them, you gotta go begging. You gotta take a little card that says lose three points. And it's not just like, oh, I can't feed my family, I gotta take a begging card. It's for every food that you're short, you have to take a begging card that's negative three points. So, <laughs> excuse me, if you're down five food, then that's negative 15 points and it's a big bummer and not everybody likes that. Not everybody likes starving, I mean, go figure. Uh, but what's interesting is that I've played a bunch of other games, we've been playing a lot of Voidfall recently, and that, it feels like negative three points for every food you're short is now like the board game de facto standard. Anytime you have to go begging in a board game because you're short uh, food for a, for a feed round resource, it seems to be a negative three point thing. So I'd be interested to know if Agricola initiated that or if that existed before Agricola or what, but uh, it's kind of neat that we're developing this this board game shorthand. Let me catch up. Uh, and you get, all right, it's stickering the cows. Very, that's the cow stickers Poppy mentioned are right here. Look at that, you get a little cow spotty. I'm not gonna do it on stream because you know me and stickers, I'm, uh, I'm worried I'll mess it up terribly. I, I don't do well with stickers. If they're not perfect, I hate myself forever. <laughs> right. Uh, Dennis Lawhausen is the artist. Thank you very much. So not, not the man I love to hate, Clemens Franz. Um, this is a scale like in Holotile, correct. Oh, I did get the correct board. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, but yeah, these are, I guess, all sorts of buildings to buy. So Omelette has a criticism about, oh yeah, this is another thing is a lot of times they'll make these so that they puzzle piece together when they haven't uh, published it on a big, you know, uh, mounted card board like this one that hinges out like so, they will take these and puzzle piece them. It's funny, the very first time I saw puzzle piecing things in a game was in an expansion to the one by the guy who did Dead Reckoning. Oh my gosh. Thank God you're here, chat, because you can help me in my, in my twilight years remember game names. So they puzzle piece together. Anyway, the two puzzle piecing things that I saw in that other game didn't puzzle piece together. I was like, what? John? John Declare, thank you. And the game was something by John Declare. Yes, the game was, you know, I think it was the first envelope sleeve card game that he did, which was called, you know, come to me. You'll think of it first because I've got streamer brain right now. Great, so the puzzle piece together, nice. So you might like not like this kind of game if you're like Omelette, uh, because what it is is there is, like nothing changes, not a variable setup like a lot of board games. It's gonna be, I believe, uh, same or similar setup the entire time. So there's an optimal path through the game and you play the game and get a certain number of points and you're like, oh, I think I can get a better score knowing more now and you play it again and you, you keep trying to play it and play it and play it until you find that, that perfect path and your, your score is as high as you can possibly make it. Um, not everybody likes that. Uh, it's fine. Edge of Darkness? No, not Edge of Darkness. Edge of Darkness? That's gonna, ki that's gonna kill me. John Declare. You know what? I'm gonna... Hold on, I got my keyboard right here. It's gonna kill me. Mythic... Mystic Veil. Oh, yeah! I did it! Hold on, and I can use my new uh, my new feature to pop it up. Mystic Veil, vale, please work, please work, please work. <laughs> yes! Nothing but wins roll Rai Rai. <laughs> right. Mystic Veil, vale, that's the one. Yeah, so an expansion of Mystic Veil, vale, the, the, <laughs> the jigsaw cut just didn't, they didn't fit together. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, I think, I don't know if they fixed it. It's kind of like, um, woo, go away cover. Ooh, Hocus Pocus. It's like, uh, what's that game? 
oh yeah, a uh, Maracaibo. They came out with an expansion and the the board, there was some, something off about them and it's like, oh man, I, I wanna buy it until they come out with a reprint that fixes that mistake. So what's going on with that? Uh, this looks like fun. I'm not gonna punch it all out now, but it looks like tons of cardboard and we got one off the list. This one's ready to play. And like I say, I think, uh, I think Cass wants to play with me. So maybe we'll dive into it this weekend. What's next? Fields of Arla, back in print, go get it. Oh my God, oh my God, what's happening? Oh, that was scary. Ooh, yo. Mm. Can you change the bottom label away from an H? You know what? I can and I should. <laughs> Thank you for, watch this. For longer game names, it takes me a little while. <laughs> Uh, please work, please work, please work. Yeah! Winning! <laughs> look at that, this is pretty good. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Revive, let's take a look at Revive. Check this out though, watch, watch. I mean, it's, it's thrilling to me because I know how much effort I put into making this work. Yeah! Oh! Woo! Net, baby! Woo! Swoosh! Mmm! I did it! I know! I'm so excited! I did it! <laughs> See? Have faith in me, because these things that I'm building in the background, I mean, the, the poor people in the Discord server, once again, another shout out to the Discord server. If you haven't been there, it's full of the best people on the entire planet Earth. Join us there. But I've been bothering them, I think, a little bit this weekend, because I've been testing this chatbot in this channel, and they're like, why? Just hide the channel until you got it figured out. And like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm gonna to need to conscript you to send commands to you to help me test it. Uh, but look, I can make things work eventually if I spend enough, if I smash my head against the wall enough times, it'll work. I'm just noticing that, <laughs> speaking of things working, the chat's not showing up here, or showing up sporadically. So four people on YouTube won't know what I'm talking about when I'm addressing people in chat. Revive. Why did I get Revive? I got this the same day that I got Fields or a couple weekends ago. Uh, I got this because so many in my game group said, do we own this yet? And I'm like, own? Uh, I hear the siren song of mercantilism. So I rushed, <laughs> rushed to the board game store to pick it up. Uh, I asked Oberon, 2K who's in chat right now, hey, what, what's the deal with this game? And he's like, oh, you know this favorite thing of yours about board games? And this, fa I don't, that's not his voice. You know this favorite thing? And you know this thing you like about board games? And this thing? It's all in that game. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll be back. So off I went to the board game store to buy it. I know precious little about this as well. I know that it is an Eastern European design team, and I know that it's post-apocalyptic, and I know that part of it looks kind of wintry and snowy, which is very unusual for me because I don't go for things with snow themes on them. Look in the front, look, it's like, look, a flower's blooming despite like the nuclear winter kind of thing going on here. Uh, I don't usually go for that. Dead of Winter, I'm like, no, no, no. Zombies in Winter, too. these are two of my least favorite things. I don't like it. Oh, not a good night for box farts. Gee whiz, that's, I'm gonna give that one a zero. We heard, come on, box fart. Do it. Hey, there we go. I'm just gonna chill out for a second because there's an ad running. We can talk. We can talk while we wait for the ad to, ad to end. Seriously, don't take the Madara lightly. You're committing yourself to a lot there. Really, how much time though? Let me know. My chat fades out real fast. Yeah, so here's the weird thing about it. I'm using a third party to get that chat thing going and to get a couple of notifications and things going. And I hadn't logged in in a while and I think they changed their pricing policy or something like that. And I was just a freeloading, dirty, no money paying hippie on their site. And when I logged back in like a few months later, all of the stuff I had set up wasn't there anymore. All of my settings were all gone, but the alerts were still happening correctly. So if you like subscribe uh, on Twitch or on YouTube or whatever, the alerts are still working. I just don't have any access to them. So that that's ad suck. <laughs> that's part and parcel of what's going on is this, this chat thing not behaving properly. Oh. 21 seconds, we're almost there. <laughs> 10.30 at 
10 seconds. Ads over already. I've got an eight second countdown. Yeah, that's how it was sold to you, Oberon. Somebody sold it to you like that. You sold it to me like that. And uh, the chain continues. Here's what we have in the box right away. Stop. Uh, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I'll open what I want. Uh, stop. This is the campaign deck. Do not shuffle or look through this deck. I didn't even know there was a campaign. See, that shows what I know. Uh, when you're ready to begin your first game, flip this card and re-add it. This will begin a five-part campaign of revival. All oh, right, you did warn me about that. It's a campaign. What it really is, is like, oh, the full game's pretty overwhelming. Let's chunk it up into like five parts and introduce mechanics as we take people through this little deck. So this is less a campaign, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, and more of a uh, tutorial. Is that accurate to say? And I think Oberon, you were saying like, ah, throw this thing in the garbage and just go whole hog and read all the rules. Am I wrong? Yeah, campaigns, progressive tutorial. That's what you said. I remember. See, I listen. I listen to what you tell me. Uh, some blue tokens and some more baby blue tokens, some green and some uh, gray. Are these the player colors? They don't look like it, uh, but these do. we got yellow and purple. Yay, purple score already. Something I love about a board game when there's purple, purple player pieces. One-eyed, one horde, wooden purple player pieces. What do we got? What do we got? They're always after me, lucky charms. Remember to tickle me dingles on social media. I should, I save those. I put those in with my uh, PLA. We got like ghosts, spooky ghosts, I guess. And we got a big old couple of cubes. That's not exciting. We got little meeples, the little tiny guys, which I found in a bunch of like board and dice games. This must be, a, must be an Eastern European thing because I don't see these in a lot of other games. Techie News got it, uh, a few others that I played, that I own. And we got this, oh look, nice. I'm assuming first player token, and it's a, I'm gonna try to tilt that so you can see the outline. It's a raven. He's nice, he's very nice. Little housey looking things. I guess we're trying to rebuild, revive, restore civilization. That's that's my, my guess, correct me if I'm wrong. Nevermore. Too right. You're a big boy enough to jump in, we did it, and we read the rest. Now, okay, so if you jump in, if you if you go feet first, do you jump in by like going through that deck and going like blah, 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 or is everything in the rule book? Like, can you read it all in the rule book first, or is it only in the deck? Let me know. What else is in here? Oh, look, little lightning bolts. Little wooden lightning bolts. Those are fun. Energy, I'm supposing, to power your rebuilding civilization and giving it some juice. It's the theme of another game I got recently called Nucleum, which is over here on the table next to me. You can't see it, it's out of frame. Uh, what else? A, a big a deck of cards. I was surprised to see some of the character designs on here. So this guy's Spaceman Spiff from the future, who likes bags of peas. I'm gonna say they're peas. The extra rules seem to be, sadly no, they're just on the cards. So how do you do it? If you wanna dive in, do you just like, Forget you, deck. You can't tell me what to do. Ah, I'm reading it all. Oh my gosh. Ah, and then your eyes melt like Raiders of the Lost Ark. How do I manage to make a Raiders of the Lost Ark reference every live stream? I don't know what's going on. Uh, back here. Here's the rule book. Again, more cautions and warnings. Do not. Oh, seriously? Whoa, this is the first time I've ever seen this. Do not punch any tiles from the red punch board before you are told, before you are commanded to. Leave the red punch boards at the bottom of the box for now. Do not, well, relax, game, chill. Just here for a good time. Do not shuffle or look through the cards in the campaign deck. If you've already done so, <laughs> to the gallows with you. No, if you've already done so, you can put the cards back in order, sorting them by the small number in the lower right corner. You just need to chill. <laughs> Whoa, it's intense. All right. So I'm not gonna touch any of these punch boards because I'm worried what'll happen to me. It's a very, uh, I don't know much about Eastern Europe, but I know that, uh, I don't know, dire things go on there periodically, and these guys are just trying to re-inflict some of that trauma on their customers. Uh, well, that's an interesting amount of, of negative space on that punch board. Usually they put art on there. That's, uh, that's curious. Huh. Chits and tokens and things. Here we've got some player boards with some of that uh, weirdo... 
Weird Al character art on it. Is there another one on the other side? Yes. No, those are the same two people. Uh, more stuff. <laughs> These are uh, not hexagonal, but what is the one in Arc Nova? There's four hexes together, so that's a size four animal enclosure. I'm guessing. That's a pretty wild guess. Great. I'm gathering it'll be a territory builder sort of thing where we're laying tiles together. And here's two more player boards that have escaped the shackles of their punch board. You can hold me down. I'm making a break for it. Nah, we're stuck in the box. So two more. One looks very, very witch coated. And this guy is like, he looks like a future dwarf. He's a very short dude with a very heavy... <laughs> How? Dude, that's got to hurt your lower back. That looks heavy. What do you do? Put it down. Put it down. I don't know. Your chiropractor is going to be annoyed with you with that thing. Anyway, that's what those look like. And a couple more of these. And of course, one of the things I really like about board games, which you know about me, is recess player boards. So all these delicious little tokens and shits and things fit in beautifully. Little score tracker down here. Little things to slot in. Oh man, that's good. Who doesn't like slotting stuff in? It's a very like steampunky looking board with knobs and wires and stuff all over it. Oh, love that. Love everything about that. It didn't look good in pictures. Interestingly, it didn't look good in pictures, but it looked great in person. Whew. Ooh, now I'm getting a little bit, a little bit excited. Board games, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, that looks nice. Mm hmm And finally, the titular... Oh, those are red boards. Those red boards don't look. Look away, Marion. Don't look at the red boards. Uh, it'll... Gonna melt those Nazis into puddles. All right. Put those. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to say it because I don't know what's gonna happen if someone's gonna knock on my door tonight. But a couple of those things in those red punch boards just unpunched themselves as I shuffle things around. <laughs> Please don't. And then they came for me. That's very terrifying. On one side of the board, we have the artwork, the incidental artwork from the front of the box. Fine. Whoa, I bumped the camera. The board's so big, we can't hold her. Uh, steady, steady, steady. Don't get too excited. And then here's a big old Terraforming Rare style or many other games, a uh, hex pattern that we can put our little city building things on there. The extra rule says Oberon are pretty easy, mostly describes the B side of the boards and how some ick. And how some icy. What you say, icy? Uh, new icons may be used, it's really not much. I do wish they had a unified rule set. Yeah, it would be nice to have it all in. Cause that's kind of weird, like, oh, I'm gonna go play Revive for the second time and it's been a while, so I look at the rule book just to refresh myself and then I gotta dig through this deck of cards. That's a little bit that's an that's an that's a decision. Certainly that is a way to do things. Uh Oberon, you mentioned that uh yeah, it looks there's no insert to speak of. This is all you get, you get a big old deck of cards. We might as well crack those open. But you definitely look at these baggies. This is oh horrible. It's horrible. What do you take me for? A poor? I have a 3D printer, I'll have you know. I'll have you know. Do you know who I am? I, I can print an insert for your crummy board game. And I will, damn it. Let me put it away. I'm putting this in the top, top of the box. That's not right. Uh, uh, the red boards. Uh, uh, it stings. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everybody, everybody back in the box. Everybody get in there and go for nice. Go for a nice board game nappy. A little have a little sleep. Shh, shut up. Shh, go sleep. Go sleep now. This, uh, this has been parenting tips with Ryan. I am a father of two, you know. Finally, the cards. Yes. Do we have a rip strip? Sort of. We got one of these little, little denty divots that I can never get my man fingernails under. Wait, art. Do my Failing eyes deceive me. I think they do. There is no such. Ah ha ha ha! Oh ho! Uh, I don't know. This is usually the part where I just bust out the knife. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna bust out the knife. I can't get under there. What kind of dexterity check do you have to roll to get into this thing? Ick! Ick! Forgive. No, I'm always worried I'll damage the cards doing this, but carefully, carefully. Hey man, I put those age contrived boards together. I can handle this. 
That was like, that was like mechanical engineering right there. You needed, a, you needed a FUD to put those together. Doctor of board games. Great. Don't have my close-up camera, so these are going to be a little bit far away, but you've got this guy who's rocking the Flash Gordon look. You've got, oh, cool, a little, little, like, like, migrant nomad robot. That guy looks cool. Oh, this guy. Oh, that looks really cool. Oh, there's some magic -y thing going on there because he's turning into like green smoke. More robot guy, more Flash Gordon guy. All right, some repeated character art. That's fine. All right, I won't hold it against them. Okay, it's all these three guys. Come on now. Come on now. Let's buy some more art for the game. It's all of, all of these guys. These cards are just those three guys. Okay, well, it's a, maybe a little bit of a letdown, but maybe it makes sense in the context of the game. Then we got a couple of other... Some of the icons that we already saw in the chits, and that's what you get for cards. And that is Revive. I'll be printing, probably do what I did with uh, with Nucleum, which is uh, I'll print out an insert for it without ever playing the game. And there it will sit on the shelf until I convince my friends to play it with me. Revive. Uh, great. We got, uh, what are we doing? How are we doing for time? How's everybody doing? I uh, got like, I got 80 more games over here. Uh, what, what, do you guys, what do you guys want to see? I got some... Uh, Hey, hey, I got some, uh, hey, got some Freedom expansions here. I got some, uh, got some, uh, got some Madara, which I'm told I shouldn't open because it's going to be too much of a thing. I got the thing that starts with M. I got uh, Inventions. Hey, can I interest you in a, in a board game? What do you, what do you want to see? Uh, da -da -da. Nobody knows, nobody cares. Nobody's here, that's fine. Nobody's paying attention. I'm barely paying attention myself. That's fine. You know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to grab this one. But I'm worried it's too far away for me to grab, and my microphone's gonna rip out. You know what? I'm gonna uh, take fate into my hands, and I'm gonna rip out the microphone myself, and then I'll plug it back in when I'm done. Here, you won't hear me for a sec. But please do tell me if you can hear me now. Am I back up? Let me check my levels. Checky, check, check, check. Looks good to me. Uh, I have foolishly, I'm not gonna switch to the other camera because I have not taken my address off the top of this box. Not that I'm worried, it's not hard to find my address to find out where I live. Uh, I just, you know, when you're famous like me, you, uh, you have to deal with uh, with a rabid fandom who uh, who sometimes crosses boundaries and basically what I'm saying, I'm saying is I don't want any of you to I don't want to wake up with any of you underneath my bed tonight. There we go. Safety, safety assured. Uh, number six. I don't know what that is. Probably reviewer number six or something. What's going to be in this box? I don't even know. Let's take a look. I do know. I'm joking. <laughs> this is the part, eh? This is the part where you can, like, really mess up your box. Okay, we're safe. Whew. I'm gonna take a little peeky-poo in here because there's so many boxes back there. I think I know which one this is. Oh, <laughs> look, it's Packing Peanuts the Board Game. Not really. That's not a board game title. Hold on. Packing Peanuts. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. Nobody else seems to be, but I think this looks really, really, really cool. This is a fantasy board game that comes to us by way of the publisher who also does Stars of Akarios, which is a big space epic -y sci sci-fi kind of game. This is their fantasy game entry. And it's got a title that... Let me get these packing peanuts out of the way. On the floor. Good. Somebody else clean that up. Yeah. Felicitations. Uh, happy life together. What am I saying? It's a fantasy game that's got a weird name, and I'm not super sure how to pronounce it. It's like when you read a fantasy novel and you don't know. Gorsh Blonde the Flub Flunger. You're like, what does that mean? I don't know. You'll find out in 400 pages. So many packages, my gosh. Anyway, this game, wait for it. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. This is stretch goal packing peanuts. Oh, this is another uh, Kickstarter campaign. Oh, 
Oh, we did it. We did it. Stream over. <laughs> All right. I believe, I believe it's pronounced Mythwind. So let's get the title fixed here. Did it work? It did not. Wait. There. Yes. Okay. I definitely did cover instead of title. Okay. Go away, cover. Yay! Look at that. I love it when stuff works. Uh, Mythe like a legend. Wind like weather, not hard. Yeah, that's what I said. Mythe wind. So. By Brendan McCaskill and Nathan Leige? Leige? I don't know. I don't know the designers. I've never played anything by these guys, but they may be interested in having me do a how to play video for Stars of Karyos. They said, oh, why don't we check your copy of uh, Mythwind and you can see what it's all about. So I'm excited too because I don't know about you, but <laughs> Facebook's got my number and probably every other salient detail about me and they advertise to me like like they're looking directly into my brain. Uh, and so I get all the cool Kickstarter ads. And these guys, uh, these guys were advertising, at least to me, pretty aggressively. So when they're like, oh, why don't we send you a copy? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing that game in my dreams now. I spent so much ad dollars trying to get exactly me to purchase it. So they may have wasted a little bit of cash on their advertising as well. So. Okay. Hi, I was wondering, glad you could join us. Anyhow, have fun punching, gotta go. Thanks so much for joining us, Oberon. I know it's, uh, I was gonna say it's late where you are, it's early where you are, so you've got no excuse, but uh, yeah, th <laughs> thanks for dropping in. Great, here we go. Here we go. Da -da 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 -do. Do -do 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 -do. It's coming off smooth. Whew. There's a there's a lot of things in this box, and it's giving me the impression that I'm not going to be able to fit them all back in. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Look at this. We've got ooh. There's treats and delights. The, really, the, every picture I've seen of this looks wonderful and marvelous, and I'm jazzed about it. All right. This is this is what you see when you dip into your mythwind box. And then we get a crafter journal, a farmer journal. I suppose these are personages you can play. A merchant journal. Of course, if you back this on Kickstarter, you're not just going to go in blind. You're going to know things about it. I'm going in completely blind. So I just well, let's crack open one of these journals. Not the ra not the ranger. I don't, we're on a farmer theme tonight, right? We opened Fields of Arla earlier, so let's go for for this guy. This guy, never you know the adage: never trust a skinny chef. Right, he's uh, talking about abundance farming. That guy's doing all right. Cool. Learn to play with a with a QR code. Day three, a little bit of flavor text. Complexity. So it looks like what I know about this game here. What I know about this game. This is interesting. I think I think what I know about this game. If I'm wrong, chime in. It doesn't end. Am I right about that? You just go and you play and you just do things. And when you're done doing things, it's got a save state and you put it back in the box. And if you want to play it again later, you bring it back on the table and it, it unsaves, it restores your save file just like a, like a, like a video game does. And, uh, and, and that's what I know. I, I could be wrong about the not ending part, but I don't know. I have a feeling that that's one of the claims they made. Jump in if I'm totally out to lunch on that. Uh, the Mythwind Town Charter. Rumors of a mythical valley shrouded in mystery have long been whispered in this region. Today, a chance encounter with small magical beings named Sprites confirms the existence of this place. These Sprites, I, I'm assuming he's a Sprite, he, she, I don't know. Uh, these Sprites call you to make it your home. Their reasons are unclear. I don't know, could be up to no good, I don't know. But for a struggling settlement of humans, the opportunity is too good to pass up. Fix, the Keeper Sprite, guides you and your closest companions through the mountain pass that eventually reveals Mythwind Valley. The first sighting of the valley takes your breath away. Its beauty surpasses even the claims of the wildest legends. And to your surprise, there are signs of old foundations and an ancient tower that looms over them. Evidently, you are not the first people to come here. All right, nice hook. Nice hook. It's similar to, I just started playing a farming game called Palea, and uh, it reminds me a little bit of what's going on in Palea as well. There are ruins of human civilization, and apparently it's 
post-apocalyptic, but what is, uh, is it not, is it solar punk? What is it where it's like post-apocalyptic, but bright and sort of cheery and happy looking? So like mankind got wiped out, but maybe that's not a bad thing kind of thing. Look, oh, who's not a sucker for a nice fantasy map and a thing. There is the map of the valley, pretty, and it's on like, you know, that kind of paper. Construction-y kind of like sepia toned. Looks lovely, although, <laughs> oh, just like Minecraft, uh, Denial. Denial is not just a river of Minecraft. The, is that, is that what, I haven't played Minecraft in a while. Is that the idea? Is it's post-apocalyptic and sunny? Minecraft post-apocalyptic? Do they add story? I don't know, it could be. Like I say, I haven't been back in a while. Certainly when I was playing, there was no, no story to speak of. Uh, there's a little bit of, uh, Tolkien geography cheating going on here. I just got to point this out. So this kind of like, ugh, maybe I don't know. Oh, I'm just trying to get the water. Whew, there we go. We got it. Maybe I don't know much about geography. In fact, that's a, that's a foregone conclusion that I... Oh, oh. oh, scrumptious. Have you tried this stuff? It's delicious. I recommend it. Water. It's got the cure for what ails you, literally. Uh, so <laughs> in... Uh, in Lord of the Rings, he does this. He's like, oh, okay, is it this way? I don't know, but like Mount Doom, where they're trying to get to, is like surrounded by, it's not, it's, a, it's like worse than this. It's not like an, like an arc, like a crescent moon of mountains. It's like, it goes blip, blip, blip. It's like right angled mountains. And I'm like, really? Is that how do mountains form geometrically like that? I don't know, that's kind of goofy. The, the, the arc is a little bit more believable. Still, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it was a previous comment. Okay, good, because I didn't know what was going on. Minecraft, post-apocalyptic, what is even happening? Nah. Look, look at all the pretty artwork, though. Ooh, ooh. If you like high fantasy, you'd be in heaven with this thing. Look, the farm. So these is where we're going to get into punch boards for all the different roles we can play. We got a little bit of money. We got a little bit of perks and skills and abilities going on. Ooh, look, look, the farmer crops, livestock and weather charts. Oh, that's neat. And I don't know what any of this stuff is, but that looks cool too. When I see this thing set up, it's really cool. I'll show you the best part in a second. Uh, merchant board. Oh, is this kind of like uh, one of those games where every roll has sort of like a different mechanic to it or maybe the same mechanic, different art. It's nice though, whatever it is. Town, season tile, resource tokens, action spaces, goal tokens. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Uh, here we go. Look at this. Oh, so all those little chits that we saw fit in these little pegboard spaces here. Oh, and look, wow. Yes, they are different boards. So the farmer, here's me trying to teach what I know about a game I know nothing about. Hold on, where's the farmer? Do, 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 do. Here's the farmer right here. Oh, no, I need to get his crops. Just a second, let me get the farmer's crops. Yes. So, somehow, and I don't know how, I don't know the mechanism, but as the farmer, you, I'm just gonna punch one of these out and hope that I don't lose it by the time I go to actually try this game out. So I'm definitely gonna try this game out. This is gorgeous, what a lovely production. You're somehow, you know, planting crops. Here, if I put the lid on, that'll keep it all safe. So, like, <laughs> look what I know. <laughs> Boy, right, you're brilliant. But then, this board, who's this? Who's the purple character? The other character, the crafter, I don't know, has a completely different, uh, different vacuum seal board uh, from this person. I think that's the ranger, the brown one, who's a completely different configuration of stuff from this person. Oh my gosh, so these are, I didn't expect these all to be unique. That's surprising and interesting. And look, this is nice, these cuts on the side uh, of the box make it easy to, to pull these out. That's beautiful. Like the, oh my gosh, look. Oh, oh, so pretty with all the things. It doesn't end there. Look, here's another board with uh, another lid. These lids are very nice and we've got more stuff and things to do. Oh my god, really? I've never seen that before in my entire life. Tell me if you have. This is, <laughs> I feel like Yukon Cornelius. This is, uh, this is a plastic board uh, mounted with cardboard on top or is it just stuck in there? I can't tell if it's glued or not, but, or if it's just like clawed in there with friction. But uh, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. I've never seen that before in my life. Wow, man, working components are getting crazier. 
And the last thing you get is whatever this tray does, and this thing. This is a deck of cards, which I think we're safe to, uh, to open. There's no secrets in here. Gee whiz, man, I don't know... I don't know, are there stories or things that we gotta work through in the book? I don't know, I didn't look enough in the book. A couple of cards. Let's look at some artwork. These are the same... Oh, Rivals. These are... Maybe not bad guys, but... People you have to compete against. Signpost artwork. All the artwork is... I mean, this is super pretty. Super nice. And on the back side... I'm gonna guess these are requirements or recipes that you have to fulfill or bad things happen. When you take this action, this stuff triggers? I don't know. I don't know, I've never played a board game in my life. I have no idea. I only, I only open them for hours and hours and hours on live streams to audiences of up to three people. Back to it. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm happy that three people are here though. I'm very happy that you're here. Don't, don't let me make you think that I'm ungrateful at all for you spending time with me. And then you print inserts for them. Yes, I do. Yes, I open them, I print inserts for them, I put them on the shelf, I rub them with a the diaper, and that's... that's all the dealings I have. Oh wait, there's more stuff I forgot. Yes, there's more. Look at this, look at these gorgeous... Ooh, these are... these are fake velvet, but they feel very nice. Draw bags, very pretty. You get a green one, you get a burgundy one, and yeah, great. I was wondering where all the rest of the stuff was. I thought it was at the bottom of the box. I'm like, is that it was a bit thin for what they're trying to pull off here? More stuff. We've got event cards down here, we've got weather cards in here, we've got some sort of uh, list of tiles. This one says winery, so I assume that these are different structures that you can build. I'm just uh, just winging it here and and then some uh, custom dice, red and orange ones, with different uh, different pit values on them, with different symbols, little birds, little people. Quite nice. Uh, this all reminds me, uh, I'm not going to open these because these definitely look like secret tuck boxy campaign envelope things, but look how nice they are. they got the sprites down there, and they've got like a fake sticker wax seal on one side of them. Holy cow! One, two, three, and four. Not going to look in those because those are definitely rewards or enhancements of some kind. And then we got the figs. Let's take a look at some figs. They're big, they're chunky, they look cool. There's the ranger. I like him. He needs painting desperately. We have a, uh, a friend on the Discord server named Varus who has a rule and is a very interesting stride. How did that guy go back in there? I feel like these are like puzzles for three-year-olds and I can't do them. Uh, here's this person. This was the, I forget, scholar? I can't remember. But she looks cool too. They all have man. That's a that's a lot of backpack. She should go talk to that dwarf from the other game who was carrying a big old satellite dish on his back. Like people, people, you're gonna cause yourselves problems. You might feel young and spry now, but you carry that backpack for a couple more game sessions. My goodness. Uh, look, here's somebody way more sensible. She's got just like a bird. I would say even the bird is putting a little extra weight. I'd be like, go away, bird. You have wings. You don't need to ride me. Just birds, man. They don't understand. And finally, the farmer, who honestly, to be <laughs> to be truthful, he could stand to carry a heavy backpack around for a little while, if you know what I'm saying. He might, he might need to trim up just a tiny bit. Uh, and I'm really wondering how, how he got so girthy on carrots and lettuce. How do you, whew. There's an ad in progress. We're going to wait it out. I'll leave it, I'll leave, I'll leave you with that fat shaming joke just while I put everything away from this guy. Very nice though, very nice production values. Uh, makes me excited to play. I'm sure if you saw this on Kickstarter, you're like, is that really how the game's gonna look? And look, yeah, it came out like that. I don't know if it's any good. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I hope so. And I very much appreciate them sending along a copy. And I'm uh, excited about Stars of Akarios as well. If we if we proceed with that, if they decide to go with uh, go with Knights Around a Table, I recommend it. I hear they do good work. <laughs> wow, I've just not put this together correctly at all. <laughs> Bird poop everywhere. What did I miss? Bird poop everywhere from the raven, I know, on the back of the backpack? Gee whiz. Do not want. Alright. 
these were here. I remember that much. It's like it's like that Sesame Street sketch. A loaf of bread. No, not that one. The other one where he tries to make his way home by by recounting the trippy psychedelic 60s, 70s landmarks. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, just scream. Hmm. Six seconds left for the ads. They might be done already. I don't know. I might be behind the times. So I'll put this all back. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, an interesting amount of box lift. I'm going to tilt that, but like, I think the box is designed to overcome that. Let's just put it all back together and see if I'm correcto or incorrecto. Whew. Tough to do when the boards aren't punched. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I might have to turn this sideways. I don't know why I suddenly develop an indiscriminate accent when... Not indiscriminate, that wasn't the word. <laughs> Discriminating isn't the word either, I promise. Vague is what I'm trying to say. Just a weird... There we go. Yeah. I mean, there is lift, and I don't know if it sh should be, or if that'll close when you close the punch boards. I'm not too sure. I'll find out later when I punch it off. Oh, it's raid time. Hey, how's it going, game guys? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, <laughs> we're just opening board games. I just got a big old stack of board games over here, and I'm opening them and cracking wise and making sassy jokes about the components. So please join us. What we have left, we're not going to do all of them. I think uh, maybe I'm good for one more. I'm good for one more. And I think the one I get to pick this time. Wait, didn't I pick last time? The one I'm going to open is by... The one I'm going to open is on the floor again, so that means I have to unplug my mic for just a second so I don't damage anything. Okay, tell me if we're back. Whew. Whew. This feels good. This feels good. We're getting through it. We're, we're making headway. All right. This one comes to us. Let me change the title here. I-N-V-E-N-T-I-O-N-S. Go. Go. Did it go? It didn't go. Yeah. Oh, because I spelled it wrong. That's why. That's not how you spell it. T N T I O N S. Yes. All right. So this one comes to us courtesy of Eagle Griffin Games, who I mentioned earlier on the chat. We're back, says Poppy. Welcome back. Hey, Duchess. Good to uh, virtually see you again. It's been a while. All right. This one comes to us courtesy of Eagle Griffin Games. They wrote me on an afternoon and they said, like, we got, I don't know why, they're like, we got, like, a couple copies of inventions. We got to get rid of them now. I don't know if there's a bomb inside them or what. They said, do you want one? Please get back to us. And so I wrote back, like, within... 30 seconds, and then, ah, thanks so much for getting back to us so early. No problem. Uh, you may know, what can I tell you about Lacerda if you don't know anything about him? He is a board game designer. Oh, his games are a little bit heavy, because there's a lot of stuff in them. Uh, this is one of his latest. It's called Inventions. Inventions no colon, Inventions, Evolution of Ideas, and the reason that subtitle is there is because if you go to Board Game Geek, watch this, I'll do this. If you go to Board Game Geek and look up Inventions, you're gonna get... Hold on. Go. You're gonna get that, which is not this. That's the game of Inventions, and this is Inventions, Evolution of Ideas. Watch, let's see if I can pull a little bit of magic here. Is this magical? Okay. Nope. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait let me try one more time. Let me try two more times. Just wait. Whoa, watch, watch, watch. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. What am I even doing? It's the same thing. See, what I did was I programmed it so that if there were multiple... Uh, all it's doing is it's pulling from Board Game Geek and it's uh, looking by title. And then it shows me like if there are multiple... Uh, maybe that's not working. Maybe I got to troubleshoot that. Ah, same one. <laughs> All right, back to the drawing board of that. Everything else worked, I swear, this stream. Anyway, 
Lacerda. If you don't know Lacerda, he makes games that are very, uh, they're heavy. They take a long time to learn, long time to play. Most of the ones that we've played, Cheryl and, and, and myself, my, uh, my wife Cheryl, we've got them. They've sat under the Christmas tree for six months because we're dirty skids and we don't throw out a tree for half a year. And, uh, and we, like half a year later, we'll go and we'll crack open a, a game and we'll spend like all day reading the rule book and, and trying to figure out how to play their investments is what i'm talking about they're 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 not for the faint of heart excuse me his illustrator Ian O'Toole, is the current it boy of board game art used to be you know guys like clemens franz i think vincent dutre is another uh another board game art it boy that you see a lot but you're seeing you're seeing Ian O'Toole's art a lot on games. I can just sit here while I open and you can name some in chat if you'd like to, but I'll name a couple that I know. Uh, don't cut your fingers. So he did, Ian O'Toole did Carnegie. He did Black Angel. He did uh, Dead Reckoning. He did uh, Ian, O'Toole, Ian O'Toole. He did, uh, oh man, so many. There's so many that I can't name a single one. No, I just named four. You're right. Is this a magic trick? What are you talking about? <laughs> How's it going, Slovak stuff? This is not a magic trick at all. It's just some middle-aged dude opening a board game that he got from a publisher. All right, here we go. Oh, you're talking about the cover thing. The cover thing, yes, is a magical trick. It's a little bit of a, a cool, um, cool programming on my part, uh, if I do say so myself. So, uh, speaking of cool programming, box fartometer. I say. Box fartometer zero. No box fart from that. We're uh, the loudest box fart we got all night was one. It's not a good night for box farts. Eagle Griffin publishes many of Lucerta's games. This is one of them. Uh, they also do Cadman EV and they do On Mars and they do uh, I think Weather Machine and lots. So if you do not if you do not have the time, like if you are diagnosed terminal. Maybe there's other things that you want to cross off your bucket list before playing and learning a Lacerda game. Uh, it's just, it's time is what I'm saying. I would, me, I would go to a water park if that was the bad prognosis that I got instead of doing one of these. But, uh, you know, they have their place and they have their friends and uh, I almost count myself one of them. I do think that, like, I like they're hard. They're hard to get to the table. They're hard to learn how to play. Um, but they can be rewarding. I quite like On Mars. Uh, Camden EV, I wasn't so big on just because I, I live in a town called Oshawa and it's like the, if you know, in the United States, Flint, Michigan was the big car plant, uh, town and GM pulled out of there and totally screwed the town. And likewise, Oshawa, we have a few more regulations in Canada, thank goodness. So when a GM pulled out uh, a few years back, it didn't quite decimate us as badly. Uh, but it's still, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have thoughts about car plants in towns running the whole show which I will spare you from on this stream. And anyway, I am getting to the point where Eno Tool is illustrating so many games, I almost can't tell them apart now. So a lot of them will look like, like I'm already seeing a lot of the stuff that he was doing in Carnegie. I'm seeing here like those hashes uh, for texturing things. It's a very clean look. I find that his, his Chrome is better illustrated than his characters, and I'm not seeing a lot of characters on here. But I find his characters, when Ian O'Toole does... I'll have you know that I dropped out of the finest art school in the country. So I know what I'm talking about when I say uh, his figure work is wooden. He... he, he uh, he, I, I don't know, I just get the feeling that he draws from photographs and not from life uh, as his reference, because a lot of his... A lot of his figures just look like they're, you know, in the early stages of rigor mortis or something. They just, they don't, they don't flow very nicely. If you take a look at Dead Reckoning, you might see what I mean. But there's not a lot of characters in this so far. Uh, Inventions, Evolution of, of Ideas Upgrade Pack. Does this, is this, you're saying that you gave me the upgrade pack or I, I, I can go and buy it and this is what it's in it? I don't know. Let's keep digging. Let's keep digging. Uh... This is the insert guide. This is a bit low, uh, <laughs> lo-fi. It's not printed in color. Does it need to be? I don't know. We saw a game earlier in the stream called uh, An Age Contrived that had it printed on the side of the box, which is very nice. Obviously, you're already paying for color printing on the box, so putting it here seems like maybe a better idea than, than just putting this cheap chintzy thing in there. Uh, board game publishers, take note. A uh, bunch of punch boards of hexes. 
this is already looking like this looks he's decided to go with a muted color palette uh, lots of blues well I guess these are sort of he's going for like a more uh, monochromatic very desaturated kind of look but here's what I mean can you kind of see like I don't know it just doesn't feel like I don't know his characters just don't have movement to them if that makes any sense I don't know look here's some of the inventions that we've made Greek fire I had no part of that. Vaccination, electricity, solar cells, computers. Wow, vaccination. Did you know that? I saw a TikTok yesterday. Apparently, a thousand people a day in America are still dying of COVID. Holy crap. I'm the only guy. I'm the only guy in, in stores now who's wearing a mask. I'm it. It's like me and like one other employee. Not other employees. Me and, and, and one employee in the whole, in all of Walmart. It's just us. It feels weird. It feels, it very much feels like, and I'm not trying to call anybody out here or get anybody angry, but it just feels a little bit to me like, you know, when your mama was like, you said, oh, but everybody else is going dirt biking this weekend. I want to go dirt biking. And your parents like, well, if everybody jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff too? Uh, it just feels like social proof and like everybody's kind of like ignored it and jumped off a cliff. You may know that what's been going on with me lately is I got a full-time game development gig last February, which is why my video output's a little bit lower. And the team is about 15 people. And in the past couple of months, I would say three months, uh, over half of all of the team members in that 15 person team have had COVID, like caught, a new caught COVID in the past couple months. And then the wild thing is that we are a distributed team. We're not even in the same office together and over half of them got COVID. So it's a, uh, it's a thing, man. It's a thing. Oshawa was bad before GM closed a bunch of plants. Yeah. You, yes. Yes, it was for various reasons, but you know what? Uh, one of the things that uh, we both know Oshawa quite well, I was wondering not in me, but like one of the things that was going on is like, it was a company town. From what I understand, the guy who ran the car plant, uh, to whom like like every street in the town is named after either him or one of his wife or one of his kids or like when they ran out of names They're like, oh, let's grab my wife's middle name and name this thing after that Anyway to the point like his house is called Parkwood It's in the middle of town and I live like way uptown quite far away from from Parkwood quite far away from all that stuff Which is mostly in, in the central part of the city and there's a park up here called Parkwood I'm like come up with name it get new names like gee whiz anyways a company company town with a company Company store and you I guess this is kind of like banks weren't always a big thing and you couldn't always trust them because they were constantly getting robbed by gangsters and Edward G Robinson types but Sam McLaughlin the guy who founded the, the the by the way we should show the board game a little bit before I talk about a town you don't care about but the guy like you wouldn't have your money he would have your money so you go work at his car plant and earn money which he would keep and then if you wanted some you'd go up to him. <laughs> so crazy you'd be like hey can I have like I don't know 20 bucks for the week adjusted for inflation that's the thing anyway and he would he would give you like he was the bank like was that kind of thing um and what really drives me crazy the more I learned about Colonel Sam McLaughlin was his name is that um this town to this day, you go on Facebook and it's very clear that the town is very, um, there's a, <laughs> there's a dearth of education in this town. And I saw that Colonel Sam funded schools. He paid money into Queens University, which is like three hours to the east of here. So he put money into that university. Did he ever put money into a, like a college or university here? No. And I think it's because he didn't want people here educated because that didn't suit him. He just wanted, you know, mindless worker bots in the factory hammering away at, at fenders or whatever. So I don't know. I think he's he's lauded for having left this legacy of, of uh, being such a big benefactor to the town because the story I always hears, oh, on Thanksgiving, he gave everybody a free turkey. Well, big deal for a couple of years a guy gives up free turkeys and yet he like impoverishes the entire population and keeps them you know stupid for decades upon decades after his death that's a bad trade you keep like guy keep your turkeys and it was a big rant from ryan about oshawa uh, i can't even fit this entire board on the camera but this is uh this is what it looked like kind of a beautiful uh, map sort of old school. It reminds me very much of like, you know, Bombay company kind of stuff. 
very nice. Will look nice on your table. Well done, Ian. Ah, but his house makes a great movie set. Yes, if you've seen X Men, <laughs> we saw X Men in theaters. Uh, <laughs> there's a moment it was shot. So he's got this big mansion in the middle of the town, and that stood in. It's it's been in a bunch of movies. It's been in uh, Billy Madison and and uh, uh, I could name a bunch. If I really thought, oh, like Undercover Brother shot in Oshawa, a bunch Canadian bacon, tons and tons and tons of stuff. Uh, Cinderella Man, I think. But so they've got this big, like, uh, Great Gatsby style mansion in the middle of town called Parkwood. That's his house. And uh, in X Men, the very first X Men movie, uh, Parkwood stands in for Ex Professor Xavier's School of Gifted Mutants or whatever it is. And so there's a moment in the movie, and, and like, I'm watching this in Oshawa, everyone recognizes the building, and like, Wolverine goes to Professor Xavier, he goes, what is this place? And then I'm the Yahoo in the back row going, it's Parkwood! And everybody laughs because, uh, and then they all lifted me up on their shoulders and cheered. Uh, <laughs> it was a good time. I don't think I should throw these foam things away because if I know Eagle Griffin, you need them to, to bolster that. So I'm gonna keep them here. But this is a very Eagle Griffin way of doing the inside of a box. You have a sheet of plastic that protects all of your components and keeps it away from the filthy, filthy board. So it keeps the all the contents nice and segregated. So your pieces of board game don't touch your other pieces of board games. So like if you got peas and carrots and mashed potatoes, you can keep them all in. Anyway, um, these are molds that we've seen in other Eagle Griffin games. These sort of quasi hexagonal buckets, I believe that we have some of these in maybe Kanban EV. Uh, and wood pieces wood pieces. Another Eagle Griffin thing, uh, very much them. You see this in a lot of board games now, uh, not so much about five, ten years ago, but you've got screened wooden pieces, so they've got uh, pictures and patterns on them. They always look very nice. Do you like wooden pieces or do you like plastic pieces? I think wood's quite handsome. Except when it comes to minis. I don't want I don't want wood minis. That's fine. You can do them in plastic and resin. Uh, and we've got uh, player colors are, yes, purple score. You know I love a good purple player piece. Should probably tilt that so we're looking like that. Yes. And what else does it have that I love? Look. Look, everybody. Recessed player boards. I can see them. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Those nice muted pastel tones. Right? Dual layered, so you can stick your little hexes here. I have no idea what's going on in this game. I'm sure it's great. <laughs> I'm sure it's very Lacerdian. I'm sure it'll take a long time to learn. Hopefully fun to play. Like Kanban EV, don't get me wrong, is, is fun to play, but it's the same reason I don't really go for winter games, because I live in Canada and I don't like winter. I live in Oshawa, I don't like cars. I just don't want to play uh, a game about cars. Your mileage, <laughs> pun included, may vary. So here's another one. Ah, oh, this is a very Lacerdian thing. This was in Kanban EV, the comic book speech bubble tokens. Let's see if we can find these in here somewhere. No, no, no. Look, Doric columns. Oh, who knows their columns? Is those Doric or Roman? I don't know. Are the Doric the curly ones? Who knows? This is getting really nerdy. Da -da -da. More of these linkages. Ah, that's another icon that I've, I recognize from other, an, at least another Lacerda game, if not an Eon tool game. More columns. Uh, pillars, I would call them. Pillars. And these busts of, I want to say Plato. Who is that? Is that Plato? Right. Uh, Vital taught, his, taught me his game. Oh, like in person? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I gotta read the rest of the chat. Uh, Vidal taught me his new game, Speakeasy, uh, at GridCon in November. Really good. Oh, you like Speakeasy? Yeah, I called this the new one, but Speakeasy is the new one. I think this was the one right before Speakeasy, and then the one before. This one was Weather Machine. So if you're just catching up and you've never heard of this guy, that's what's going on. Is it wondering, this is not your kind of game. You want to stay well away from this. Uh, you would not have a good time with this. Look underneath this next tray, more things. This is very on Marsy. Big old stacks of hexes going here. We got some cards in here. We got this is very Kanban EV. I think these pieces are actually, or these screens at least, are in uh, Kanban EV. Like I say, the uh, question mark bubbles are very much a Kanban EV thing. So we're starting to see some repeated, uh, and that's fine. That's fine. I'm not complaining. More of these, uh, oh look, little sort of Bedouin shepherd kind of pieces. It's a very, uh, I mean, it's got a style, that's for certain. It's got a style, and it feels very Eagle Griffin. If you like Eagle Griffin stuff, they do some really nice stuff. Look at this, this is, this is a metal, presumably first player piece, who looks like, I'm gonna guess, Hermes, but does Hermes have a scythe? 
I don't know, I might be wrong about that, but this is like a heavy metal kind of bronzy. I don't know if it's like painted bronze, probably, but this is a nice piece. This is cool. Very nice. Feels great in the hand. It's got a good mouthfeel. No, don't do it. All right, I won't. Great. And then a little, uh, this is nice too. A little, well, a couple, one for each player. No, I'm wrong. Not one for each player because we'd find purple and that's player color. So we've got these, uh, uh, draw containers to pull our hexes out of. I'm sure those come apart if you have fingernails. I'm having a kind of a hard time. Ah, there we go. Lovely, lovely. Um, what did I just play? I was playing a Razor Canada that had nice lids like that for the component tray. Oh, and I can't get it back on. I've done something terrible. Here, go. Yep, we're good. Beautiful. But like I said, like I said earlier in the stream, there's going to be something here where everything fits beautifully into this insert. Except for, I mark my words, like, maybe it's here. Like, four or five things that just sort of, like, slosh around. Or maybe in here? I don't know. But that's, like, that's the Ego Griffin way. Everything is beautiful. Except for one or two things. You're like, ah, I just got to print, 3D print something this big to fit them in there and stick it in. Anyway, otherwise, great production values. Not an inexpensive production, I'm sure. I haven't looked up the price in this. Maybe somebody can hit a uh, board game shop right now and tell me how much this is running for. And I don't know if it's available retail either because uh, I'm not sure if this is Kickstarter only, but I'm sure they would like me to say whether it is or not because if they've got extra copies to sell, I'm positive they'd want you to buy them. Uh, this is Inventions by Vital Lacerda. Same designer as On Mars, Cambin EV, Weather Machine, Lisboa, and many more. Lisboa de Mercado, was that him or is that uh, ghost design? It was co-designed with someone maybe? Right, and he also had a hand in, no not him, but his protege designed Pampero, which is like a, I want to say Brazilian, but it's not Brazilian. It is a South American country, maybe Bolivia? I might be wrong, but it's about um, the energy grid there. And that, that dude has come up under uh, Vitalis Serta as a, as a designer. Learning things cool. There we go. There we go. You know what? I've been told, I don't know, maybe 9, 12. Yeah, I can do, you know what? I can open up one more thing. This is just like, I don't know when I'm going to stream again. And I just want to get all this stuff out of boxes. That's all I want to do. Okay. Okay. I'm running out of table space, though, is the other problem. I'm going to put this down here. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here, let's see if I can reach this without. No, I gotta, I gotta unplug one more time. <laughs> Hope you can hear me. Once again, I'm gonna peel off my address label so I don't have crazed rabid fans surrounding my house at all hours of the night demanding pieces of my hair and fingernails as rabid fans are wont to do forget that who needs that in their life really i mean what would that even look like if you came to my house and demanded my fingernails i don't know i'd have to wait and see how i'd react to that grab some pieces uh i don't i've lost the plot i don't even know what this is <laughs> I don't know what's in here. It's just too many boxes. I think I, I think I know what it is, but I could be wrong. Uh, we're gonna have to make the the title go away though, just in case it's not a match. I don't know if that is typical. My goodness, you don't think so? You've never uh, you ever picked a celebrity that you're really infatuated with and then looked up their house, maybe derived their address from a small packing label on their live stream, and then went to their house and hid under the bed, and then when they found you and kicked you out, then just picketed on their front porch all day long, demanding their toenails. It's not a... Really? Are you sure? Okay. Here's what this is. There's a game called... Oh, you know what? I'm going to put it up. Because I can. Boop, 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 boop. Nope. Yep. I, I pushed the wrong button, but there's the cover of it. Let's get the title up. There's a game called Feudum, and I recently, uh, about a month ago, 
a month ago now, two months ago. Uh, Mark Swanson is the designer of Feudum, and he hired Knights Around the Table to make a Feudum video, which I was very happy about. I met him a couple years ago at Gen Con, and I was like, man, Feudum, that's a game I've always wanted to make a video for, because it's like one of the, one of the, one of the heaviest ones out there, and you know I like a challenge, and you know I like making how to play videos for heavy games. So, I made one for Feudum. Then I was like, man, Feudum's got a lot of like expansions. And I know that Mark is planning to do a septennial, so like a seven year anniversary, like uh, crowdfunding campaign for it. And that's coming up. I, th I believe he's announced that and I'm not breaking any NDAs to tell you that. So that's coming up later in the year. You, you're gonna be able to buy Feudum again because supplies have basically dwindled to nothing. But as they were dwindling to nothing, I like a challenge. So I'm like, oh, how many of these expansions can I run around and purchase before they all run out. So I got most of them and it was a really dumb idea too, only because this is a game that has a big box. And so you don't need to run around buying the expansions, you just buy the big box, which contains most of the expansions. Notice I just said most, and that would drive me nuts, buying the big box and knowing that there are like one or two things out there that I didn't have to complete the whole thing. So I wrote to Mark about it. I'm like, I, Mark, I can't find these, these last two things. He's like, oh yeah, don't worry, I'll send them to you. And I thought, oh man, that's such a nice thing for him to do. And then, uh, then Mark hired me to do his latest game, Fled, which I, uh, is crowdfunding right now. So if you go, I believe it's gonna be either Kickstarter or GameFound, but I think it's Kickstarter. If you go to Kickstarter and look up Fled, if Omelette's around, maybe he can put a link in there in the uh, in the chat for you to go follow. Uh, that's a game about escaping from a Victorian prison. So you can go pick that up now. And then just as I was finishing up that project, I was like, wait a second. Mark never sent those things to me. What's going on? <laughs> so I wrote him, I'm like, were you really? This is just, you just blowing smoke or were you really going to send these? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot, I forgot. Okay, I'll send them to you. Like, I don't know, Swanson. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, believe it, because he pulled through and here they are. So by way of showing you this, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the base game, which is around here somewhere. Ah, here it is. You would not believe the unbelievable pile of boxes around me right now. Here is the game, and there's a reason. Oh, there's an ad starting in 60 seconds, so I'm gonna keep you on tenterhooks. Here it is, and if you've seen the video, you'll know this about Feudum. It is gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful production values. Very heavy game. If you're not into heavy games, this is definitely not for you. If you are into heavy games, it is very much like, strangely, it's like a fantasy version of Voidfall. There are a lot of similar things going on in both games. They're both kind of 4 x And where Voidfall is sci-fi, this one's fantasy. Where Voidfall's hook is its tech, this one's hook is its guild. So that's kind of the difference between those two. But look, among the things that he sent me, he sent some nice upgraded things for this, including metal coins, lovely, and you see these in the video, these beautiful models, airship, the monster comes with the base game, gorgeous, and like sort of not quite ceramic. Oh, the ad's starting soon, I gotta stop talking. We're gonna wait out the ad. Uh, I'll see you on the flip side. I'll keep showing some components here. So the, uh, while the ad's kicking, spooling up, uh, he sent me uh, these castles. You know, this isn't necessary to gameplay at all, but it just gives the whole thing like a really nice table presence. And then like he released the thing that's like, oh, you can take this golden painted stand and then put this thing on it. And that looks like really cool on the board. Like all of this stuff is just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. He came out with these guild tracking dice, which again, aren't super necessary. I would recommend that you track your guild points with some sort of die. But uh, these are nice because they actually have the, the like game icons and symbols on them. There's a beautiful ship right here. And there's a, there's like a, a what, water ship. They're all, they're all great. And then these big, these big uh, sort of dice looking things, they're not actually dice, they're your pawns, they represent your your people and they fit into these vehicles and you can ride them around and make connections on points of the map. Great, great stuff, really liked it. And then when I saw there were a million other expansions, oh, the ad is in progress. I thought the ad was going that entire time while I was talking. Oh my gosh, I gotta get the hang of this. Oh my gosh, it's only been a few years, like it takes me a little while, it's gonna be before I learn the ropes. And put all this back. Bide some time. You guys played this? No silly, the price for the game. You've made a comment about a comment that I made, and I don't know what you were saying. However, suck. Uh, but I'm sure it was witty <laughs> and well placed. Oh, the price for the game. I thought you meant the fingernail thing. No, obviously, the fingernail fan thing. 
I get it. I get what we're saying now. The price for the game, a hundred bucks. So games are like, games are a hundred bucks now. That's like what they cost. They used to not be, and now they are. Uh, see also colon groceries, comma clothes, dash the necessities of life. Everything's gone up like crazy. Mmm, <laughs> reverse box fart. Mm, let's get some box fartometer. I'm gonna put that at like a. I think that sounds like like a four. Like a four. It's great. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep this box around for a, for a bit, and I'll show you why. Just while I lo load everything else up on the table. Oh. Okay. So, I went to. Whew, I went to Meeple Mart in Toronto. I was just cruising the shelves, and I was like, oh, they have a feudum thing there. I should buy it. This is without researching that there was a big box or anything. I should I should wait. I should wait to say this before I. This, look. This is a Meeple Mart bag. Meeple Mart is one of the three big board game stores in Toronto. You got Meeple Mart and 401 Games and Board Game Bliss. Of the three, my favorite is Board Game Bliss, though I preferred when they were in a warehouse. I preferred Meeple Mart when it was in a warehouse as well. Now, Meeple Mart has gotten rid of a big chunk of their board game area and just filled it with pinball machines, which I, that's a slight, but man, you gotta make money however you can, because you're in downtown Toronto and groceries are getting expensive. my gosh <laughs> 200 plus bucks asks is a wondering oh my sweet summer child um i would like you to go through an exercise please i would like you if you're interested i would like you to go to the most recent terraforming mars kickstarter and i would like you to click on it and pretend that you're buying it not the base game but you're buying like and a small expansion with a small deck of cards and a couple of neoprene mats and I want you to tally it all up and see what the number is because it is well north of 200 bucks. In fact, it's like three times that. Whew, that's a spicy meatball. Yeah, they're getting dumb. They're getting dumb expensive. A few years ago, the most money I'd ever paid for a board game was, uh, again, through a Kickstarter, meh, uh, it was like 400 bucks for the seventh, not the seventh Citadel, that's the new one, Seventh Continent. So that and its expansion cost me 400 bucks. I was like, oh my gosh, I'll never do that again. Uh, uh, <laughs> we won't discuss. Um, anyway, here's what I got going on. That's why I play Minecraft. I couldn't afford, afford to play other games. Yeah, man, Minecraft is economical. What does Minecraft cost now? Even if you're paying a hundred bucks for Minecraft, my family's been paying, playing Minecraft on and off for like a decade now. As long as it's been out, what has it been, eight years, nine years? Phenomenal value in that game. I just downloaded a farming sim I was talking about called Palea. Palea is free to play. Of course, you can pay money for cosmetics if you want to, but like just the amount of play I'm getting out of Palea for zero dollars is, is unbelievable. But this is like, uh, these are physical components, right? These cost money. You don't get a golden airship stand for nothing. The reason why I kept the box around is, is check this out. Hold on, let's see if I do this properly. I didn't realize this until I put the uh, I put the graphics on, uh, on on the thing. So look, that goes in like that, and then if you take windmills and catapults, this is gonna be hard to see because you can't hold. It. I'm gonna have to put this down on the table. No, but we're not gonna have enough room to do it. My camera won't be able to pull up far enough because we can barely fit this going on. Hey, anyway, whatever. You can look it up online. But all of these like like puzzle pieces, like all the artwork puzzle pieces together, so you can put like I don't know why you ever would, but it. it it just makes a, it makes a nice marketing shot, I'll tell you that much. So the mountain of this one goes over here and it completes the picture and it makes a panorama with the windmill one that goes over here. Anyway, you get the idea. That's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Uh, what's not cool is foolish me paid like, look at this, I paid like, I paid 23 bucks for this one and I paid 30 bucks for this one and I didn't need to. I could just buy the flipping big box, which there were copies somewhere that I could have hunted down. Uh, so foolish. I don't know what the whole shooting match is going to cost when they do the Septennial Edition. You'll have to talk to Mark Swanson about it. But I do know that one of the things that's going on, wait, maybe I can't even tell you. 
there are specialized components that are uh, they're new and, and unique to that campaign. That if you're a Feudum fan, you're definitely going to want to check out. So what have we got? We've got Rudders and Ramparts. What does it contune? Who does it contune? Well, let me tell you. Uh, it had those three castles that I was telling you about and the nice airships and everything. And this is, if you're going to buy something uh, to enhance freedom, that's the most money you're going to spend on expansion is this thing. It's the most expensive one, I believe. Uh, great, let's get that out of here. He sent along this, which is a... Really nice surprise, a Queen's Army Neoprene playmat. The Queen's Army, I think, is the Queen's Army the solo? I think it might be, which is quite nice because I'm going to have a hard time getting people to play this with me because of the time commitment. But look at that. Look how pretty that looks. Suffering the slings and arrows. Look there. Oh, they're going to pop that balloon. My goodness. Goodness gracious. So that is to go with the Queen's Army. Let's just read real quick. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, look, I can read German now. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, the Queen's Army expansion is a solo or multiplayer variant that pits you against the Queen and her royal army. Let's quickly slice her open and see what's in. Not slice her open, the box, I mean, not the Queen. That's gross. Rude. Although, maybe you want to. Maybe she's the bad guy. She looks like the bad guy. We're facing off against her. Okay, slice her open. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, great. 14 years. I just bought a, oh, it was 14 years from Minecraft. I just bought a subscription uh, for my nephew and it was less than 40 bucks. I know it was cheaper in the earlier days and then Microsoft got their paws on it. I think it might be more expensive now. Uh, a couple of rule books. They always get like, you get like nine languages of rules in the, uh, in the few boxes. Um, a couple of baggies and a new deck of cards. There's not a lot in these boxes. Um, but it's, uh, it's all about the gameplay, baby. So you get three new pawns, two black, uh, one blue, and you get a little horsey. I think these all come with a fun new figure. So look at this cool little horsey that's made of the same weird, not quite ceramic stuff that the behemoth monster and the sea monster are made of. And then you get um, cards that I assume are going to, I'm gonna, I'm just guessing here, that are going to uh, enact moves for the bad guy player that you're squaring off against. That's my gut. I haven't looked into it, but I, I have a feeling that there's a bot that you play against, and the bot is the queen, and that's how that one goes. All right, okay, we're getting, we're doing it, we're doing it, everybody. We're almost there. This is Seals and Sirens. I know what's in this one. I know what's in this one because it involves nudity. <laughs> you know I love nudity. Who doesn't? The Emperor. The Emperor doesn't love nudity. Makes him feel a damned fool, really. Great. Look at this adorable seal. Look how cute he is. I, I love this artist. I forget what his name is. I've looked him up before, but uh, he does great work. And I'd love to see him work on more board games. So, ooh, look at this. I found a shiny, everybody. I feel like I'm opening Pokemon cards. This has a, uh, like a foil treatment on the card that makes it uh, metallic in the bottom right. Very nice. And what do you get in here? Why you get... A little, a little mermaid with her boobies out. Lovely. Cool, cool. I think she might be bad. Let's see what the back of the box says. Oof. And a little uh, punch board of these swirly tokens. The back of the box says, the Seals and Sirens expansion introduces another food source and a monster to the game. Yes, so it is classic mythology mermaid that's not like, she's not like singing with a friend, the crab and the seagull. She's, she's eating your organs out of your body while you're being pulled off your ship. That, you know, like a proper mermaid. That's what I'm saying. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is next for Alter Ego says, uh, lets you replace up to six of your action cards with alternate cards featuring new special abilities. I'm a dummy because I think I already have, I think I already have this. Because there was another pack of cards in the main box, or that he sent me, that did that. Whatever, whatever. Let's waste some. Let's waste some dough and just open it anyway. There goes the resale value of that. Nobody's gonna buy this because they're all gonna buy the the biggie box. I'm a, I'm a dum dum. Okay. So it's it's, a, it's gonna be a pretty big box for I think the amount of stuff that's in it. But yeah, I think I'm right. I think I have this. So it's this token, and. That bag, that empty bag, and this little deck of cards, which I think I already have, so I'm I'm uh, I'm a moron. Uh, but that's that's what, you, that's what you get in Alter Ego. So it's alternate uh, an alternate deck of cards. Uh, Feudum is one of these games where everybody's got the same deck of cards. 
and it's kind of like a little bit like if you played Concordia, you're choosing a roll out of your standard deck of cards to play each turn. And so those are just uh, a whole new batch of rolls. That's like if like if you've exhausted all of the gameplay in the main feuding game, and that is a, a preposterous undertaking. There's no way that you'd ever get through it all to the point where you'd need that. I mean, these days I open a game and I'm lucky if I get to play the game like once. I'm lucky if I get to play a game once. Uh, quickly, this one is Windmills and Catapults. The Windmills and Catapults expansion introduces new landscape tiles and or a sixth player to the game. Boy, howdy, I don't know about that. That might slow things down tremendously. It's a long game, like I say, at four. But I mean, people are still playing Twilight Imperium for eight hours. So new landscape tiles, these are, uh, if you have a surf helping uh, to helping, <laughs> helping. If you have, if there's a surf on a piece of land, they can get these landscape tiles that they're tending and then you, you, you flip them over and they get resources on them and that you can take right away or you can sort of invest and let them pile up on the, on the tile. So you get new ones of those and you get new player guide in the language that you need for the sixth player. And you get a new Haversack token and like uh, everything that you would need for, you know, uh, uh, the sixth player who is gray. But it's also nice, even if you don't play six players, to have additional color choices. Like, oh, mommy, mommy, can I play gray? Uh, and then we got, uh, you know, the deck cards for the sixth player, which is the standard cards that all the players get. We got some extra baggies and a lovely little, be protected in cardboard, which makes me worried about putting it in my box. Ooh, ooh, it's delicate. I see why. Talk about inserts. This one doesn't have one, and I think uh, I need to make one or find one. Look at this little... Again, it's that weird ceramic material, and it's got little spinning fins on it. Lovely little piece. Beautiful. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna put it back into its little cradle here, because if that's how it came, I don't want to tempt the fates. That's gorgeous. I've seen it on the board. It looks really, really nice. When I walked by this at Gen Con, I was just like, I, it stopped me dead on my tracks. I was like, holy cow, what is that game? Oh yeah, Feudum. Looks amazing on, on the table. Table presence, we call it. So it's the kind of thing, if you bust it out at a con, people, it'll turn some heads. Same deal with uh, an age contrived. I want to bust out an age, age contrived at a con just so people will go like, oh my God. What is that? The metal player boards? What are you talking about? What are you playing? And then finally, the last little bit that he sent along was this. <laughs> Squirrels and Conifers. This is interesting to me because I'm working on a game now. It's a VR game with a company called Games by Stitch. And uh, we're doing things, representing things with colors, but a good portion of the people who buy VR headsets are male and a good portion of males are colorblind. And so we have to figure out ways to depict things so that colorblind players are able to parse their way through it. So this is one of the problems he had was the cubes he found uh, that represent food in the game uh, were indistinguishable by colorblind players from another color cube, probably a reddish one. So what he did was he put this out so that it has not only different colored cubes, so they're like hot pink, I think, instead of green, which is like just a replacement food source. I don't know, call it berries or whatever from the tree. But then there's some other, there's like a replenishing mechanic from it and something, something, something squirrels. Uh, so these are, again, the ceramic material. I don't know if it's ceramics, but these are some conifers that you can put out on your on your board game table in three different colors. I, I read a little bit about them. I don't quite know how they work, but that's what you get in that little box. Kind of feels though, doesn't it? Like all of the boxes should have been this size. Like those are really big boxes for what for what goes in them. But I understand that board game publishers are under weird pressures. If your box is too small, it'll get overlooked on the board game shelf. So it behooves you to make it large enough to catch people's attention. I know a bunch of games have done that. And they're mostly air, much like chips. Here are your squirrel cards and some rules. Right, so how does it work? Remove all the green food cubes from the games and use the pink squirrel cubes instead. Whenever a brown wood cube is placed on the map during setup or during replenishment, place a conifer tree next to it if one is available. Place a pink cube beside any tree you just placed and beside any tree without a squirrel during replenishment. Right. So it's like a regenerative food source because I think what might have happened is during gameplay he found that um, games were less fun when 
the food was, ran out, it was hard to get. So this is a way to uh, uh, replenish those resources. And that's what you get. I'm getting dry mouth now. I didn't bring enough water with me. But that, what did we just what did we just unbox? Like nine games. We <laughs> we did Feudum, We did Mythwind. We did Revive. We did Fields of Arla. We unboxed. I showed you the rest of H. Whoa! We dropped our equipment. Can you still hear me <laughs> off the table? So that's why I kept on plugging this because I knew it just wanted to fall. And the last time this fell off the table, my other one it shattered into a million pieces. And my patrons uh, bought me another one. Speaking of. If you would like to patronize the channel and see more quality content, like a middle-aged guy opening things from his shelf of shame, please, by all means, head with haste to Patreon and uh, and help me out. You can help me out for as little as a dollar or for as much as $450 million, if you've got it lying around, if the state of New York is demanding it from you. Cool. <laughs> oh yeah, we did inventions too. My my word, that's uh, that's a lot. I thought that that would take a uh, take a little bit of a load off, and I'd be like, oh, finally, I've unboxed everything, and now I can play it. But now I'm looking at all these games, thinking like, oh no, now I got to find a way to play them. <laughs> so I don't know. I've just meet the new boss, same as the old boss. I've traded that pressure for for this pressure. But uh, I mean, it's good pressure to have, right? Playing board games. Uh, did I miss the stream? Says DJ Mock V. Hello, joining us from the UK, DJ Mock V. At what I have to assume is two in the morning or something. Um, you missed it, but it'll be back up on YouTube. I'm gonna split it up and do a couple of parts, and the ones about an age contrived are gonna be together. I don't know what I'll do with the rest of them, but you'll see them again. Trust me. Thank you for joining me tonight, and I hope that you'll uh, follow what we've got coming up on the channel is a how to play video for an age contrived with the the updated rules and components that came out when the uh, Kickstarter was finalized and the game was finalized. So that's coming down the pike. And some exciting stuff on these here live streams that I've been working really diligently all of my weekends to program and get ready for you. And when's it going to be ready? I don't know. It depends on whether I can like... I'm using ChatGPT to help me program some things, and it's like finding the nerdy kid in school and picking him up and going, do my homework for me. And hopefully, if you shake him hard enough, he will oblige you. So that's my relationship with ChatGPT now. So if I can if I can bully ChatGPT into building things for me the right way, then we'll have some cool toys to play with here on the live stream. Uh, it's 14,000 AM. I don't know what that, <laughs> I don't know. We I don't use a 24 hour clock. 1400, 1400, two in the morning, two in the morning? No, two in the afternoon? I don't even know. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you again. Uh, nice around the table. Bye bye. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.